When Aya's mother suggested he become a chef, he couldn't believe people study cooking. Even as a trainee, he thought no one would take him seriously until he saw their response to his food. How would you describe your cooking style? You know, my style of cooking, it's more about me understanding myself firstly, because I mean, it took me forever to get to a point of being proud of what I did for the public. It's always been my own um, secret space, but it took me forever to get to a point of being able to show it to the world. And when you're having my food, the one thing that I always hear people saying is, mmm, mmm, no one like talks when they eat my food, and that's what I like about it. Four years ago, a restaurant owner appointed Aya as head chef. Within 12 months, they'd won best seafood in Cape Town. Now, he runs his own business. I have lots of fresh, lovely looking ingredients over here, lots of colors which I love, but what exactly are we making today? You know, um, I'm gonna start with the dish that my mom loves a lot and also my grin. I recently found out that she was also a chef, well not a chef, she was a domestic worker, but cooking around um, different people's houses, you know, back in the days, I was not even born then. And what she loved eating was umfino, which is like a standard in our community. So it's basically um, pub, which is like maize meal mixed with rice, cabbage and spinach. So I was like, why don't I take that and play around and put myself in it, you know, and create it differently, but also still have those original flavors there. So I'm doing that first of all, that umfino, you'll love it. I use sweet chard for umfino. I don't like using the baby spinach because I mean, it dies quickly in the pot. Like you get like small, I mean, small spin uh, spinach when you're cooking it, it kind of, goes down and you, you get like this small amount of it. And then with that, I'm gonna start with my cabbage as well. So while you're doing that, let me just put my whole cabbage in here because later on, this is gonna come in handy for our mfino because we're gonna use the, the layers, the outside layers of the cabbage to actually roll in our mfino in there. So that's my modern twist on it. And also we're doing, I'm gonna show you how to make a beautiful French onion soup for yourself at home. It's gonna be nice and easy. And I'll show you how to roast sweet potatoes with curry. You know curry, I mean, we all about now winter. Mm. And I want you to taste the a bit of my comfort. You know how I, cre uh, how I define comfort food. You were a runner up on Top Chef South Africa 2016. What was that experience like and how did it impact your career? That experience for me was actually one of the best experiences I've ever had. It actually was the highlight of my career up until today. I, I never thought that I'll make it to the, like, the finals. I mean, for me, being on the top five still was like an achievement, you know, because the, the one thing I was praying for was, can I just not go home the first round, you know, because I, well, I don't want to embarrass anyone. So when it happens that I go to the finals, for me, that was like groundbreaking. I, like, I didn't even care if I win or not. So I really, really had so much fun and it had opened so many opportunities. I mean, the fact that I took the leap of faith of resigning from my job and decided to private chef, which has been something that I've always wanted to do. And for me, that time, it was when the food stamp was like placed there, that dude, you're done. This is your, this is your time. Mm-hmm, awesome. Look at how beautiful that is. And then now I'm gonna check my infino because it's time to check it out now. Ah, man. Let's have a look there, that looks cool. You see how the rice is, it's like starting to cook and I'm gonna start to mix it a bit and then add in my maize meal. Incorporating popular staples into new African cuisine matters to this progressive chef. <sighs> Smells like home. Does indeed, <laughs> man. <laughs> and then we mix. Aya, you grew up in Kailicha. How do you think that affected the shift that you've become today? It was just my goal to make sure that I have a job. It, it, it was not about what type of chefing job it is. I just wanted to be in the kitchen. I just wanted to make food and I just wanted to earn money. I think also growing up from Kailicha, you kind of see a lot of your peers um, not doing much with their future after school. All they do is just they stay around um, the hood or the corners and all of that. And then my thing was, I never want to be one of those people. It made me just keep striving more and more and more. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to assemble the whole dish. In just his second year as a private chef, these wholesome, innovative dishes have seen Aya become a regular guest on Afternoon Express, doing campaigns with huge global brands and creating his first co-written recipe book. Awesome, man. That smells good. It smells so good, yeah. Look at that. Ooh. I see what you mean about that golden effect. Can you oh, smell the I can cheese? Smell the cheese, and it's got that perfect little grilled taste and all, all you need to do now is just to chop some parsley and add it there to kind of give it that nice earthy green look. Ah yeah. oh, man! Daring to be different, landed chef and ambassadorship for a major food retailer. 
doing social media campaigns on hunger and sustainability while keeping audiences enthralled with his food. See how it smells, we're already getting some of those aromas. Oh, that smells good. Look at that. It's almost got like a, I know you didn't put cinnamon on, but it's got a yeah, cinnamon yeah, yeah. type of a feel to it. Pretty warm. Time to eat and enjoy. Well, everything looks and smells absolutely divine, and I believe we've got some guests joining us as well. You'll get to see my mom. My mom is going to be here to taste my food, and actually she's going to be tasting this food for the first time as well, so I can't wait to see what she's going to say about it. And also a couple of my friends are here too, so yeah, can't wait. Well, let's make our way through. Awesome. <laughs> Chef Ayer is one of four children raised by his mother, Veronica Gope. As his friends know, she's more than a parent and as a mentor is a constant source of strength and encouragement. She raised him never to give up. Guys, before we dig in, Mom, I have to ask, you've been such an influential person and figure in Aya's life and also in his cooking career, but how do you think you influenced him into getting into the culinary business? I was working very hard and I was working as a domestic worker. So I was getting late at home, like seven, eight o'clock at night. And I was living with him alone. So I, he used to cook for me. And then he would say, mom, can you do, what can I do? What can I cook for you so that when you come home, there is something and then you can cook something else for us. And then I'll ask him to cook rice for me. And then when I get home, and then we'll do eggs. And then we'll do egg rice with tomato sauce. I didn't know I was raising a chef. I didn't really, I didn't. Well, before we dig in, I'd like to say thank you so much for showing me how you infuse your culture into the flavors of the dishes you make, and also for being able to share this opportunity and this dinner with your family and your friends. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, and thank you for taking time as well to come and see me and enjoy my food. Hopefully, you'll feel the grandma's heart that I'm talking about. <laughs> Can we eat? <laughs> Next year, Chef Aya hopes to launch a kitchen studio in Kyalicha to showcase the diverse talents in his community and as a launch pad for many new careers.